just like we did for the uh, aortic cases, we're going to present uh, a couple, two or three mitral cases and uh, um, clinical echo imaging and then talk about different uh, options. Uh, so our first patient's a 76-year-old woman with uh, hypertension dyslip dyslipidemic. Uh, she's had lung cancer uh, with an, a lobectomy uh, and has gotten chemo and radiation. Um, she uh, unfortunately has uh, metastatic cancer of the brain, treated with Cyberknife, paroxysmal AFib, uh, and is on Coumadin uh, uh, for paroxysmal AFib with severe mitral regurgitation. It's a progressive shortness of breath uh, and generalized fatigue. Cardiac cath with uh, a wedge pressure of 22, normal LV function. Pulmonary function testing was fairly normal. Nothing critical on CT. And she had a, a calculated SDS score of 4.5% uh, for mitral valve replacement and 3% roughly for mitral valve repair. And uh, as such, she was uh, uh, considered a candidate for uh, mitral therapies and was randomized uh, as part of the repair MR trial uh, to surgical MVR. You want to, you want, Will, you want to say a few words about the trial? Or? Yeah, it's um, a uh, randomized trial of, of tier uh, mitroclib versus uh, surgical uh, mitral valve repair. And, and uh, the criteria are, uh, and intermediate risk surgical patients. Uh, the other criteria is um, age greater than or equal to 75 years old. Um, so, um, I mean, just, you know, looking at this patient history, Al, can you comment, you know, do you think that STS risk score is, you know, reflects her, risk, reflects her risk? I mean, there's, you know, this history of malignancy and you know, is that reflected in the score? I mean, what, what's your perspective? So the STS um, <clears throat> score doesn't include malignancy <clears throat> as, a, uh, as a risk factor, although certainly clinically, a patient with lung cancer who's, you know, had metastectomy for, for brain mets is somebody you have to clinically think about what their long-term survival would be, although as our oncology colleagues would tell us, that actually uh, brain radiation for um, asynchronous met metastasis to the brain and lung cancer is not, uh, does, it, it limits your five-year survival, but it's not going to mean this patient's going to be dead in a few years. That being said, I think the, the main things that you'd be looking at, her ejection fraction is preserved at 60%. You'd want to see at least 60% with severe mitral regurgitation for normal, normal LV function. And her pulmonary function tests are, are, are good, actually, despite the fact that she's had a lobectomy. Um, so my, my, my guess is that that's probably a relatively accurate risk yeah. assessment. I mean, another part of the criteria is that, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know if we're going to be looking at the echo images, but uh, from a transcatheter perspective, the cardiologist needs to feel that they can confident that they can get a result of mild or less MR with a mitral clip, and the surgeon has to feel pretty confident that they're going to be able to have a successful mitral valve repair, uh, as opposed to uh, a uh, have, getting a replacement. Um, so here we have a, a summary of the of the TEE. Um, and uh, we'll, I think we'll, we'll have our images here. So, uh, Omar and Lynn, you want to comment? Or? You know this one? Okay. okay. Um, so, you can see there's a bileaflet prolapse, and, um, um, and also the MR is a 3 plus, EF is normal. Uh, next, please. And uh, the 3D on first view, you can see there's a redundant uh, uh, leaflet um, um, with a myxomatous um, appearance. And also the annular, mitral annular um, dilated. And there's also a um, uh, mitral annular uh, disjunction. This is... So, so the, 
Yeah, so this, this patient was, as, as said earlier, was randomized to surgery mm -hmm. for uh, mitral Sorry, valve. Can we just go back one, George? I was going to point one, yeah. two more th things out for the discussion, um, <clears throat> just to the 3D image. So if you can see on the bottom, um, so there are two things. That there's, this is a case of fibroelastic deficiency, meaning the leaflet tissue is actually abnormal. So as Lynn mentioned, that's why there's prolapse everywhere. But the other thing for the discussion on um, mitra clip um, versus surgery is that uh, you see there are, there are separations between the posterior leaflet, which is on the bottom, and that makes it a bit tougher to do that procedure. So th this is the post-op um, uh, echo, which looks great, and, and the patient had the mitral valve repair and did well. Um, I, I, I think um, I, I didn't... Um, Evaluate this patient initially, but I have to tell you when I when I first looked at this, I I, I had some reservations about you know how, about, about I was surprised in some level that that the patient was accepted for repair MR. Any thoughts on that, or just because it was it's not a straightforward with, clip? Uh, with, uh, because you, you you weren't sure if if we get a good we result, could get, we could get a good result as good enough result as I, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I mean. It, I mean, I mean from what the images I saw, the um, the jet was primarily central, and I, I think the valve area was big enough to accommodate multiple clips. So, I I felt comfortable that we could get a good result. And and when we present these trials, we present it to a committee of expert surgeons and interventional cardiologists, and uh, you know there has to be agreement on the panel that. Uh, you know, both the patient can get a, mitra, a surgical mitral valve repair, and and the cardiologist, if they're randomized to a mitral clip, that they could get the MR to mild or less. So, did they did they um, have some reservations or not? not really? um, I I don't remember. Uh, I mean, I was this is my patient. I was on the call. I I don't remember there being any reservation, and um, I mean, I, I I mean personally, I was hoping she get randomized to mitral clip, but. Uh, she ended up having surgery, and she did. She did really well. Yeah, yeah I think um, there's also imagers on those calls because of the anatomical descriptions. But uh, I, I think your point is well taken. That this is a case where you, I think, you need enough valve area for multiple clips right. in order for it to truly be eligible for the patient to be eligible for this type of a trial. You know, the other the other point is, um, you know, with the trial. Cardiologist is able to do just one thing, just uh, edge to edge repair with the mitral clip. You know, a surgeon is able to um, do a leaflet um, procedure if necessary, reduce the leaflet. They're able to use a ring. Um, the previous patient, they're able to place neocords. So um, there are a lot more opportunities for what a surgeon can do, and there are a lot more opportunities out of this country for what interventional cardiologists can do. So uh, you have to be a little bit um, careful, I guess, about um, about optimism, you know, for what can be done with uh, with a mitral clip because it really is comparing apples and oranges. I was uh, on call for the the screening call. I was uh, unless I was uh, surprised that they actually uh, approved this case. Um, I thought there was a redundant of uh, leaflets. Obviously, for this patient, the surgery is better choice. Uh, um, they can, uh, re um, you know, reduce the redundant leaflet, and they also did the uh, left atrial appendage uh, ligation, and they did a PFO <laughs> closure on this patient. So, for surgery, you can do multiple things, address another valve issue, you know, at the same setting. Um, and also, we noticed on the image there's a MAD, a um, mitral annular um, disjunction. This can be uh, addressed by putting an uh, annular plastic ring that can close the MAD because uh, MAD is associated with uh, the risk of uh, malignant ventricular arrhythmia and uh, sudden cardiac death. And uh, there are studies show so after surgical repair with the ring that actually um, improve, there's an improvement of uh, ventricular arrhythmia. Hmm. Thank you. All right, let's go on to, with, uh, this is, 
uh, oh, this is the same patient. Just uh, nice result. Yeah, yeah, nice result. Great result. So on the left is you know, MR pre and and really nothing. Post. Okay, next patient it, uh, uh, is 87 years old. Uh, hi, uh, history of uh, AFib, uh, AICD, and severe MR. Um, uh, presented with an acute heart failure episode. Um, he had uh, for, he was higher risk than the other patient with a STS score for mitral valve replacement of almost 7%, um, and that was in increased uh, above that for frailty. Um, his ejection fraction was moderately reduced. He had severe MR. Um, he was uh, felt to have uh, functional uh, mitral regurgitation. Uh, and uh, <coughs> here's the uh, echo, 3D on the... So um, here you can see the um, left atrium is dilated and um, there's a central MR and the leaf, both leaflets are tethered. You can go to the next one, please. Here you see LV, um, LV functions like 35, 40%, and uh, there's a tethering of uh, both anterior leaflet and posterior leaflet, and there's a mitral annular dilatation and with a central MR. So, um, Andy, you want, you want to just, just for some of the audience, you want to just talk yeah. about functional, yeah. functional and degenerative? And, and right. So there, there are two... Um, uh, etiologies for mitral insufficiency. Um, degenerative of our primary mitral insufficiency is a leaflet problem, and uh, functional mitral insufficiency, like this case is, is a ventricular problem. Um, and treating patients like this um, in the COAP trial led to the um, approval for the MitraClip for treating functional mitral insufficiency previously or initially. Uh, only patients who had leaflet disease were treated with edge-to-edge -edge repair. And, um, you know, COAP was a, a trial of uh, MitraClip for patients with functional mitral insufficiency against guideline-directed best medical therapy. Um, and uh, it was um, uh, very, um, it was a markedly positive study uh, which showed not only an improvement in survival, a decrease in um, hospitalization, heart failure hospitalizations afterwards. And I guess as Dr. Jenner said um, earlier, there was a two-year window in which patients who were randomized to medical therapy needed to stay on medical therapy before they were allowed to cross over to uh, mitroclip therapy if they were not doing well. Uh, and it's, you know, one of the, it was a, a large trial, one of the most positive, um, you know, large uh, trials in, in uh, you know, recent history. So uh, I, would, I would imagine that this patient was offered mitroclip, and I would hazard to say that it got a good result because the anatomy seems favorable for using, um, you know, probably more than one mitroclip, and there probably was improvement in ventricular function as well as decrease in the degree of mitral insufficiency. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so under TE guidance, uh, um, the mitral clip system uh, was advanced through the septal into the left atrium and then um, and then into the LV, and we, under the T guidance, we make, sh make sure the uh, clip system is uh, um, aligned and um, placed on the, in the center of the leaflet perpendicular to the coaptation line. And then um, the leaflets, both leaflets are grasped and then we use a 2D, 3D images to make sure the both leaflets are inside the clip arms. And then um, we turn on the color, we close the, the clip, and if the results are good, then we re release the, the clip. And so this one is, um, is right in the center, A2, P2, and uh, we put, place the one clip. You want to comment on how much MR is left? Yeah, so one. in this view, it looks like there's uh, uh, still um, uh, like 
one to two plus MR or a two plus MR on the most three on the <coughs> lateral of the clip. And we also have to make sure the gradient doesn't go up after we place the, uh, before we release the clip. And, and uh, with the 3D, we make sure the tissue bridging is good and uh, there's a significant reduction of the MR. So this is a comparison of pre-op TE and uh, post uh, 30 days, there is a one to two plus MR and uh, at six months, there's probably two plus MR. It's getting a little worse and also over the time, depending on the LV function, if the LV function over time get more dilated, get worse, then MR is gonna um, increase. Do you wanna just say something about grading MR maybe with e eccentricity or the? Um, yeah, so, so the, um, after you have, after mitral clip uh, place the normal uh, like PISA method, we, it's not a very accurate. I, I would, um, you know, you, you can comment on so Omar. So I, for the, after we put, Clip, the best is by 3D, we check the 3D vena contractor area and then uh, to grade. And um, so the traditional normal MR grading system um, will not work properly after we place the clip. What, what's yours? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. So I mean, PISA in general is completely outdated and I don't actually use it because it's, it's proven in multiple studies that it severely underestimates your true regurgitant um, parameters. So, uh, and, and definitely with the clip, really the only way to compare pre and post um, besides visual is to do a 3D color Doppler vena contracta. Mm -hmm. And the eccentricity part, I mean, the, the classical teaching was always that eccentric jets, the ones that don't come straight down the center, they wrap around, should be graded up just on the basis of eccentricity. But uh, actually, Seth Uretsky, where Philippe works at Morristown, has a lot of data, MRI data, showing that that's not actually true. So you actually have, still have to measure it. You can't just grade it up. And that, for echo, that would also be done on 3D color Doppler. Thank you. OK. And uh, last patient uh, uh, is an 85-year-old woman, hypertensive, dyslipidemic, again, severe mm -hmm. MR acute heart failure symptoms with edema as well. Um, even higher risk and STS score for surgery of almost 9% for mitral valve replacement. Um, and um, the severe MR, um, myxomatous valve, and uh, there was a prolapse, uh, including uh, a flail of the A2 uh, segment of, of the mitral valve. And uh, valve area was decent at four centimeters squared. Um, okay. So here you can see the um, both leaflets, there's a, a prolapse and there's a flail segment in the anterior leaflet. It's actually the medial scallop of the mitral valve and the, with um, a torrential MR. Uh, the vena contractor area is 1.1. And there's a pulmonary vein flow reversal. So um, from 3, 3D and fast, you can see A3 scallop is prolapse and flail, and also there's a P3 scallop prolapse. And there's a very eccentric MR jet um, pointing laterally. Okay, so um, we did a transeptal puncture at the height of 4.5 centimeter. Next, please. And then um, uh, first, uh, the um, planning process before we um, put the clip. So we have to decide what kind of uh, um, clip we, we use based on the length of the leaflet and also based on the location of the uh, lesion. So this one is uh, quite challenging because it's uh, at the medial commercial lesion. So in that location, there's, uh, there's not much uh, space and there's a uh, heavy uh, dense cords. So in, and the leaflet's length is um, uh, 
long enough, so we decided to use a narrow XT. And so the system uh, advanced into the LA and then positioned over the flared segment and under T T3D guidance, uh, 3D NPR guidance, then we advance the device into the LV. And uh, make sure both lifts are grasped, and then drop the gripper and make sure both leaflets are well um, inserted in the clip arms. Next, please. And then check the color. If we like the results, then we, um, and we check the gradient. Then there's a, you can see there's a two to three plus MR, residual MR lateral to the first clip. And uh, also the gradient is, um, is low. And uh, then we decided to put another clip lateral to the first one. And so we, this time, because it's uh, kind of in the middle of A2, P2, we decided to use XTW. And then we got a good result. This is 3D. Uh, post uh, two clips and the trace with a trace MR and the mean gradient is three at the heart rate of 67 and the LA pressure also significantly reduced. This is comparison of pre and post the clip MR. Al, that, <clears throat> that last case with the bileaflet prolapse and the flail. So if, if you're going to repair that surgically, what, what, what's, what's your go-to for how, how you repair it? So is, is that a good <clears throat> question? Or is no, it's a very case? good question. I mean, I, I think for my own practice and the practice of a lot of guys who do mitral repair, we moved uh, further away from leaflet resection towards uh, neocortal resuspension. So... <clears throat> In a Barlow's valve, I think there's a lot of room for leaflet resection and remodeling to change leaflet heights. But in a little old lady, presumably fibroelastic deficiency with ruptured cords, probably not a big valve to begin with, I would probably do neocortal, uh, a neocortal approach to resuspend the valves if I was going to repair her. And, and, that, and that would be just neocords? I mean, or with a ring. With but, a ring, okay. But yeah, but I mean, I think... I think um, all the surgical literature has supported the use of a ring for any kind of longevity in your in your valve repair. So it's almost, mm -hmm. a, almost a given. Almost a given. I mean, the complete ring versus incomplete ring is still a debate that we have. I personally favor complete rings, but yeah, I would still put a ring in. Yeah. Okay. And but I'm glad you guys clipped her because that 87 <laughs> year old lady with an SDS score of 10 is not no, a great case. She yeah. wasn't a good case. No, no, no. no. Yeah. But if she was, you know, yeah. you know, 10 years younger. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you very much, everybody. <clears throat>